Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to have a look at the 4K Ken Burns effect. Ken Burns is uh, a great uh, filmmaker, makes amazing documentaries, and because he has to deal with a lot of historic footage, uh, there's still images, and to try to bring some life, he'll pan and scan those, and you can see those in the stories about jazz, baseball, Civil War. Amazing stuff. Now, as a Canadian, I want to tell you that Ken Burns has said one of the most influential movies to him was a 1957 Canadian movie called City of Gold about the Klondike Gold Rush. It's a combination of film and still images, and there's pan and scan moving around. In, the, in 1957, now, there were no computers back then, there were no motion-controlled cameras. What they had to do was place a still camera over a, an image, take a photograph, move the camera, take a photograph, move the camera. It's almost impossible to do that kind of movement smoothly. So they actually built a, an, an, an armature. Uh, it was a they basically had a sheet of metal and they tapped out all these little lines, little dots on the metal, and they moved an armature with a camera on one end and a pointer on the other. So wherever they moved the camera, they moved it along the dots. And what you end up with is beautiful, smooth motion. So, hey, as a Canadian, I had to give a shout out to the National Film Board of Canada and the movie City of Gold. We're gonna do it all in Premiere Pro and it's really, really easy. I'm gonna show you several different methods. I'm gonna show you panning and scanning and also cutting an image and, and zooming over. Now you can't really do this too well with HD footage. Uh, and that's simply because you can't, you can pan, move around, but you can't scan, zoom in without losing the quality. It doesn't have to be video. So although we're going to be looking at video, you could do the same with very high resolution still images. So you can take the, the giant images that you have, you shoot in a beautiful high-end DSLR and drop that in, no problem. Actually, even many smartphones today will take huge images. Drop them into the timeline. Don't scale them down to HD, drop them in and move them around. So the same technique can be used. Let's go have a look at what I put together and then we'll break it down. So the first is the pan is going on in the image. For this particular one, we're, we're now we're zooming in. We're zooming out. This is the same shot there. I just cut it and changed the scale. This is a, a regular HD frame, and this is a 4K shot, just framed differently. The pan is in the frame, but um, I chose to, to frame this differently. So let's start by creating an HD sequence. And the easiest way to do that, um, if you don't have a piece of HD media, is to, to uh, create a sequence. And I just go to DSLR, and for me, 1080p. Click OK and create that sequence. Now you'll notice over on the left-hand side, I've got a lot of different media. Some of it is HD, some of it is 4K, and some of it is 5K. Or if it was Ultra HD, again, you'd see that uh, showing up in here. Now, when you drag the video over to the sequence, so this fits in directly. This is just an HD shot, but then let's grab the overhead shot of the umbrella. So let me drag that in. And the very first thing you'll notice when you drag it in, this is a large frame, it's already cropping that scene. If you get a dialog box asking you to change the sequence settings because you dragged in a clip of video that doesn't match the sequence, just choose to keep the sequence settings because you're dealing with HD, but you're dropping in larger frames. Okay, if we twirl down our motion settings and look at scale, scale is set to 100%. If you right click on this clip and choose set, not scale, but set to frame size, it's going to fill the frame. You might notice black borders if you're 
dropping in footage that's 4096 because the aspect ratio is different. You'll notice over here that it's scaled to 40%. And if I change this and move this around, you'll see my image is now smaller and fits into that frame. I wanna show you if I go back to 100% and zoom out to 25%, if I double click on this frame, you'll see there's the size of that frame. So this is how you can pan and scan a move around within the frame. So you can do it this way. I'm gonna to choose to leave it on fit. And instead, I like to use these controls over here. So if I mouse over top of them, I can change that control. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to pan along. So I'll set a keyframe at the beginning. So I've got to find him. You can see he's actually walking in with the umbrella over there. So I'm going to start at the beginning with a position and scale property. So clicking on both of these stopwatches adds keyframes over here. And as he walks through, I'm going to zoom in. So I'll change the scale and move that up. So now let's go have a look. Zooming in and panning along. And that's how easy it is to pan and scan, zoom in, zoom out. Now, one thing I wanna show you is that th the keyframes that are automatically created are linear keyframes. These keyframes over here, I'm gonna change them to Bezier keyframes. And that's just gonna make the camera move a little bit nicer, a little bit more organic and fluid. Now, if I try to play this back, and this is 4K media, there's a good chance it's not gonna be playing as smooth as it can be. If, if your machine is underpowered, you might have to turn this setting down. And if I turn this down to a quarter, it's gonna play that back a little smoother. All right, let's go look at my zoom out that I had. So that's this one here. And you can see we're starting at 100%, which works okay. I'm gonna set keyframes for both position and scale. And then by the end, I'm going to reveal the rest. So I'll zoom out and put a Bezier keyframe on that one. So now we start zoomed in and reveal the rest of that location, okay? All right, for the next one, this is the shot. Let's zoom out and look at this whole shot. You can see this is the shot that I cut in two. So I'll start with a wide shot so we're seeing the water, but we also notice him in the top right. Now you can keyframe this if you want, but I for, for something like this, I want to feel like this is two shots. I want to make it look like I have a wide angle and then I have a closer shot of him on the bridge. So I'm going to just cut this where I want right here. And you can use the razor tool. You can choose Command K or Control K on Windows click over here. And now for this one, let me get back to my move tool. So for this one, I'm going to zoom in. And I can only go so far before I revealing the black in the, in the uh, background. And there's only so far I can go here before I reveal that. So now we've got the same clip but we've got two versions of it. And because this was shot in 4K video, if I set this over here to 100%, you're not going to lose any resolution. At 100%, a large UHD or, or 4K, 5K clip 
at 100%, it's cropped, but you're getting a pixel for pixel ac accurate view of the, the large clip in the HD clip. That's good because you're not going to reduce any of the clarity. Now, if you don't have the proper focus, and that something in the distance is out of focus and you blow it up, it's just going to be out of focus. So there are some restrictions here, but if you've got your, your lens shot on, you know, an infinite uh, focus, then he's going to be in focus. And I think this is a pretty good job, you know, from that shot there to him up there, and it looks pretty good. And then I just found this crab shot. So this is just a straight HD shot. So it goes from there, doesn't have to stay in 4K. There's an HD shot. And then the last one is our subject standing on the rocks. And again, I'll just use the right click set to frame size. And he's a little bit too far away. If we look over here, we're at 40%. So I've got room to blow this up, move this around. And there is movement in this camera already. So it's part of the shot. It follows him as he walks down. So that the, the panning is in the camera movement. The scanning is in the motion settings in Premiere Pro. So those are all the different ways that you can use the Ken Burns effect or the National Film Board of Canada effect to pan and scan. Remember, I'm doing it here with 4K video in an HD frame. You could do 4K video uh, in a 4K frame. Again, there's a limitation of how much you can blow things up. And this could be still images and video altogether. It's basically position and scale keyframes in media that you have in your timeline. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, please take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us more, join us on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. We love our supporters over on Patreon. And hey, we now have um, a link on the front of our channel so you can donate through PayPal. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.